Greetings, boys, girls, teens, and everyone in between. I am your resident executioner in training, Gary Gatti. Today's lesson for those who too wish to eat the rich and give their fortunes to the needy is how to determine whether a bouge should be re-educated or executed. A bouge worthy of re-education is not particularly rare, but is hard to initially find. So many have contributed to the shithole we are forced to live in without facing any shred of confidence. But some, just some, these bougies are genuinely nice people who were passive in the world's destruction. Which brings us to today's subject, Kylie Jenner. She was born to powerful people and had her life basically handed to her. Sure, she donated a small portion of her fortune to charity, but she never had to struggle for her success. Her clout was enough to establish herself in the beauty industry. So, what do you think? Should she live or should she die? Let's watch this educational video to make up our minds. You should go now. Run. No, I won't leave you here. We can run together. Listen, if we run together, they will shoot us from behind. We both die. So. Welcome to my humble abode. I, your goth mother, have been expecting you. Come, spend an evening with me where we'll dine on the finest of China and bathe in only the most organic essential oils. I promise you that once you gain a taste for the 1%, you'll never want to leave. Before I can tell you, I must confess, I am not rich. This bathroom's from Amazon. This wine is from my parents. The Glass is plastic. And I live in a studio apartment in my parents' property because I am fucking broke. But do you know who isn't faux rich? The house of Kardashian Jenner. All of its members have net worths well into the millions, successful business ventures, a motherfucking TV show. Hey, Court. Hi. In my generation, however, Kylie Jenner takes the cake for being the most influential out of all of them. She has almost a billion dollars in net worth from her endorsements and business ventures. And I bought a bunch of her makeup to show my support for her lifestyle. But dear viewer, you may be wondering, how did she do it? How did Kylie become the world's youngest self-made billionaire? Let's find out. After my disclaimers, of course, Number one, please do not harass anyone I mentioned in this video. Number two, I was not endorsed or paid to make this video. Number three, yeah. Kylie was born on August 10th, 1997 to Caitlin, then known as Bruce, and Kris Jenner. She grew up in gay Los Angeles and was the youngest of two full-blooded sisters. She went to a real school, partook in the cheerleading team, but her life changed in 2006. Thanks to her half-sister's sudden success, she and her family were placed in the spotlight and nothing would ever be the same again. A lot of her early work was done with her older sister, Kendall. The two were asked to host screenings of cinematic masterpieces like Glee, the 3D concert movie, and The Vow. Remember that classic? Their charisma and flawless fashion sense landed them the title of Fashion of the Year in 2011, and it was all downhill from there. Thanks to this attention from the media, Kylie was able to launch some of her own fashion lines with Kendall. Teaming up with the likes of PacSun, it was actually quite fashion forward given what was considered cheek in 2013. I'll give him props for that. The collaboration was a success and the sisters soon made their own jewelry, shoes, and other clothing with more successful brands. In 2015, however, Kylie was able to make her own mark. 
how Kylie Cosmetics was born. From these lip kits and eventually expensive face brushes and provocative blushes, her company got valued at around $800 million in 2018. And that's not without a few impressive feats. She's mastered the art of social media marketing and used her own influence to sell her brand. Help. Thanks to her efforts, the company was worth $300 million after one year! And she still receives revenue from her endorsements and appearances. Forbes called her the youngest self-made billionaire, but not without controversy. Some asked, was she really self-made? She came from a privileged background and had a lot handed to her. And here's my answer. No! Y'all might be screaming at me that I messed up few key details in Kylie Jenner's life story. There's a reason why I did that. I'll explain later. Here's what I skipped over for those who live under the sea. She is the daughter of an Olympic medalist and a, a socialite? I really don't know what Chris is supposed to be. She was previously married, however, to lawyer slash businessman Rob Kardashian and had four children with him. Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and um, the fourth one. Kim was already having some success in the 2000s due to working for Paris Hilton, the Kylie Jenner of the time, for those who don't know. It was Kim's sex tape with famous rapper Ray J that plunged Kylie and her family into the spotlight, but they were already well off to begin with. Kylie and her sister attended a private school with an average tuition weight of over $30,000 as of this taping. Well, they attended one until after the ninth grade. Then they switched over to homeschooling in order to focus more on their up and coming ventures. Kylie's cosmetics brand has always been partnered with Sea Beauty, a company best known for its significantly cheaper, but very good, I highly recommend it, ColourPop brand. Hell, it's on the See Also tab of Kylie Cosmetics' Wikipedia page! But, I digress. Fun fact! Miss Jenner has a YouTube channel with over 7 million subscribers. She doesn't post much, but I watched a few of her vlogs and I can conclude this. She tries, just tries, to seem like your everyday girl. She tries to look relatable to her fans, like, OMG, y'all, I'm driving home in my robe, and I had to wake up early because my daughter was crying, guys. <laughs> but, bitch, in that same video, you do a photo shoot for your next cosmetics collection and surprise your surprise-hating friend for his birthday out of love. Now, if she can't be relatable, what does she try? Relatability sells. Or to be more specific, the illusion that you're accessible to your fans sells. Articles that tell you how to be an influencer stress that it's super important to engage with your audience, find which channels work best for you, etc. But seeming like an ordinary person definitely helps with your brand. Remember that Papa John's video from a while back? I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. No, the other one. Greetings and welcome. Welcome to Papa's house. This morning, we launched our PapaJohns.com worldwide website. I got my best friend, my helper, my son, Bo. Bo's in the house. Hey, I'm high pizza, low tech. I'm high tech, high pizza. In hindsight, it looks absolutely terrible, but I see what they were trying to do here. They wanted to try to show that Papa John is just a normal guy with a normal life and just wants some goddamn Papa John's pizza. Of course, it didn't work on me. I haven't eaten in a while. So why did I initially leave out the significant details of Kylie's life? Well, Without them, it sounds like a kind of classic American success story. Jado is born in rags, or not rich, whichever is more convenient. They'll work hard, often at McDonald's or something, while attending college. They graduate with high marks and have a job here and there, but they'll always have a dream. And with hard work and dedication, their dreams come true, and they become a billionaire. 
This is the story peddled around for people like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and so on. But like what I did earlier, key details have been left out of their success stories. One interesting retelling of Jeff Bezos' life comes from Minute Videos, responsible for such classics as... Oh no... It follows the formula that I described to a T, but conveniently forgets that Jeff Bezos' adoptive father was an Exxon engineer, his grandfather was a scientist who retired early at a ranch in Texas, and he worked part-time in McDonald's at high school for less than a year. And he was named Times Person of the Year in 1999 for his innovation in the online market industry which was still in its infancy at the time. The I never wanted to be rich claim he stated was also disputed by his high school girlfriend. Jeff always wanted to make a lot of money. It wasn't about money itself. It was about what he was going to do with the money, about changing the future. Oh, and before you scream at me in the comments, Bill Gates was the son of a lawyer and a businesswoman. Elon Musk's father owned an emerald mine, so they had a high-class lifestyle. So there! But why, though? Why must these billionaires lie about going from rags to riches? Because if they seem relatable, you'll be more likely to buy their product. I'm sure this happens in more places than America, but society tends to sell success to us. They say that these people were just like you, living their lives one day at a time while not having a bite to eat or a place to call home. Then, once opportunity knocked at their door, their lives changed forever. And you too, if you're lucky and or talented enough, can become rich. Maybe you'll be popular if you wear this makeup, or maybe you'll be rich if you buy these clothes. It's psychological and I hate it. So here's the modern American success story. Either one child gets born into a wealthy established family, two child grows up in the limelight, three as a teen or young adult they will decide on a career track whether it be business or modeling or whatever, number four they will peak in their 20s, will have a ton of admirers and potentially a shit ton of controversy, number five they fall out of favor when they hit 30 or when someone younger replaces them. Or, number one, child gets born into middle class or up family. Number two, child goes to college with ambitious aspirations. Number three, they will find a company, get a nice job, etc., and will achieve infinite success. Number four, they will claim they came from rags and have ascended to riches. Depending on the kind of celebrity they are. And sure, there are genuine rags to riches stories, but they tend to be the exception rather than the rule. Kylie didn't have to struggle to get any semblance of stardom, much like the rest of her siblings, nor did any of these self-made billionaires she's often looped with. They were given advantages that allowed them to succeed. It's as simple as that, my loves. But. She's still popular. Even I can't escape her from time to time. If you're familiar with deep flower gothic lore, you'll know I've been on and off working on a superior version to the shitty Queen musical. In the original show, the villainess is a middle-aged diva or Lizzo clone, depending on who you ask, <laughs> named Killer Queen. Yes, really. I used Kylie as a major inspiration for redesigning Killer Queen for my version of the show. I even wrote this in my official description of her. Behind her Kylie Jenner-esque facade, though, she is ruthless. So, what do you do? Keep in mind, my dears, that the success stories we're surrounded by miss a few key details that make them a lot less impressive. We can't ignore them, but we can be critical of them. And with that, I take my leave. Hmm, even I must admit, dear viewer, that there is a good argument for letting Kylie live. She and her sisters will all be dead soon enough, but there's no denying the amount of people who'd want her to be re-educated. So, 
I'll leave it to a vote. Should Kylie live or die, rest or fry, you decide. And soon, I'll know for sure what her fate will be.